Hi teachers, it's Mr. Heffern, and I'm here to talk to you about cyberbullying in our school at St. Mary's Colgan. Um, to talk to you a little bit about what I told the kids, um, but also what we can do as teachers and as a staff um, to address cyberbullying and to uh, take every step that we can to prevent those issues from occurring. So <clears throat> this is um, a lot of what I talk to the students about. There's a slide at the end of this presentation specifically for you um, teachers, but I want to be, I want to show you what I'm going to show them so that you are aware and we are all on the same page. So first off, um, what is cyberbullying? And for, te for teachers, we probably have a, a, a more clear cut definition of what cyberbullying is um, as opposed to students. I think students do know what it is and they have an idea in mind, but I don't think they understand that um, cyberbullying can contain and can look like a lot of different things. And so um, I'm trying to emphasize that to them with this slide and basically show them that cyberbullying is bullying or harassing or tormenting, et cetera, via the internet or technological means. And so this can be through cell phones, computers, tablets, social media sites, text messages, uh, chats, and websites. Okay, so a lot of different avenues right there. Um, and it can look like a lot of different things. Exclusion, harassment, outing, stalking, fake profiles, using a fake profiles, um, trickery, and trolling. And so I hope that this slide helps emphasize to them uh, that you may think you know exactly what cyberbullying is, but it can look like a lot of different things. And when you're using technology in any, any type of technology or, or the internet in any way, we need to be very careful of what we do and what we post and how we ut utilize those resources because um, there can be very serious consequences. So another thing I want to I'm going to emphasize with the kids is that um, I always hear about this the St. Mary's Colgan and bubble um, and basically saying or meaning that we live in a bubble here and we're kind of protected from some of the harsh realities of life um, and we don't see those at our school all the time and so we've got a great um, some great conditions and some great uh, resources and materials and, and buildings and, and that type of thing um, but I want you I want to emphasize to the students that uh, we may have some good conditions, but we are not immune to this. Um, it can very much be a, uh, a part of our school and happen in our school, and we need to um, understand that reality. So here's some statistics to kind of back that up. First off, 7 out of 10 children experience cyberbullying before the age of 18. And then in a pool of 20,000 students, 70% of them said that someone has spread rumors about them online. Uh, and then last point here, schools that did not allow cell phone usage actually reported a higher rate of cyberbullying than the schools that did allow cell phone usage in their school. And so that connecting with us, um, we um, have a pretty strict phone policy and they can only have their phones on lunch breaks. Um, and we're, we're pretty strict about, strict about that, but um, just because we don't have our cell phones in our classes, um, I wanna emphasize that this can still be a part of our school. Um, and so don't think that we are immune to this. Um, like I said, this can happen in our school, and we want to make sure that we are treating this as a very serious issue. Some other st statistics. Cyberbullying is a major cause of depression and suicide among teenagers. And 93% of children age 8 through 18 have computers at home, and 66% of children age 8 through 18 have a personal cell phone. And so, um, again, we don't live in a bubble. 93% um, of students have access to computers at home, and 66 have access to their own personal cell phones. So this can very much um, be a real issue for us and our kids and our school. Um, and as that first bullet point kind of shows you and stresses, um, it can cause depression and even suicide. And we know and we discuss and we talk about those issues and the severity of those um, very often. So um, I want you to understand the importance of um, this, this talk and this conversation. So using um, our St. Mary's Colgan resources, first off, if you use this, uh, or if students or, or teachers use school-owned technology to harass, bully, et cetera, then we can intervene and we can discipline um, on those issues. And then um, you do have civil, li civil liberties, but if you threaten or infringe on someone else's civil liberties, then we can intervene and we can discipline. So um, what I'm telling the kids is just because you post something um, online at night, or online on our or, or look up some website on our computer just because it's at night um, there can be punishments there can be um, um, uh, yeah punishments um, 
for what you do if it's on our um, devices or even if it's not in our school. So just understand the severity of this. Um, oftentimes what you post, it never gets deleted. You know, someone will take a screenshot or whatever. Um, so just understand that the what you post can be out there forever and can have some serious side effects. Some tips for this. I'm telling the kids to speak up. Don't stay quiet. Don't let something happen. Um, report issues that you see. Tell a trusted adult. Tell more than one adult. Tell a teacher, an administrator. Um, utilize Mrs. Brown, our school counselor. Um, demonstrate care, number three. Help those in need. Try to post positive content. Don't encourage harassing. Don't laugh. Don't um, yeah, don't laugh or encourage in that way. Don't laugh or make fun of or torment. Um, don't encourage any of that behavior. Uh, it's number four, stay safe. Try to limit online time um, or technology, technology time. There's always threats out there. Um, and then also be aware of your emotions. And maybe when you're sad or you're not feeling um, the greatest, uh, try to stay off social media and stay off of some of those websites because um, sometimes that can, can just not be the best thing. Five, and these this is kind of where some, these are some, number five and number six are some steps that teachers, us as a staff, can really emphasize and help the students. So document everything. If you see something, if you hear something, um, if, if something pops up and you know it's a serious thing, you need to document it. You need to collect as much evidence as you can so that, um, you know, we're treating these issues as serious as we can. And then usernames and passwords, try to change those frequently, not frequently, but change those every so often. Make sure um, you're not giving this information out. Make sure students are not sharing this information with each other. Um, uh, because if, if something happens on your account because you shared your password with a lot of your friends, that can still come back um, and you be responsible for it. So emphasize to the kids that they need to keep their passwords and their usernames and all that information secure and not be sharing that. And so then this is the, the slide for, for uh, the teachers to focus on what we can do. So first off, we need to educate and talk to our students about cyberbullying. In every class, I'm not saying every single class, every single day, but in all of our classes, especially when we, we start to use the internet or we start to use different resources and online resources, we need to, to have a conversation with our students about um, what cyberbullying is, you know, the, the serious the seriousness, the, the threats, um, all the different issues about using online technology and online resources, um, and just try to talk and um, educate them on what it is and what it looks like and the consequences of those things. So um, first off, educate our students in all of our classes. And then we need to, as teachers, be aware of the content or the websites or the apps that we are using and wanting the kids to use for our um, classroom because there can be some sites that get dangerous and there can be um, um, some content out there that may not may not be accurate um, or be the best thing to use. So be aware of that. Make sure you're double checking that stuff before you let the kids use it. Uh, again, report or document any situations. Work closely with Mrs. Brown if you do have a situation. Try not to put this stuff off. Try to talk to her immediately and be proactive in situations um, to, to account for liability and that type of thing. Uh, remember our school policy on cell phones. Sometimes we get lax with this as teachers. They have their cell phones only at lunch. So not in the passing periods, not in the bathrooms. Um, if you see that stuff, let's be strict with it. Let's be a unified front um, and be strict with that stuff. And then lastly, we need to demonstrate and model the proper behavior of technology um, and online behavior. So whether that be our own Facebook accounts, our own online social media accounts, um, you know, how we look stuff up, how we um, cite our sources, whatever it is, uh, we need to be a model um, that the kids can look to and say, that's, that's how I act as, a, as an adult, as a mature person in society. Um, so we need to, as teachers, be demonstrating the proper behavior. This last slide is what I tell the kids, I'm ending with for the kids. Um, our school motto is be the light. Um, Christ be our light, uh, show us the way. And so we need to be the light to um, those that we encounter, those that we interact with, um, those that we interact with maybe on the internet um, or on online resources, our students or our friends that we encounter and, react and interact with, um, whether that be on social media sites and different apps, etc. We need to be the light and, and represent Christ's light, just like we emphasize to the kids. So let's take this issue seriously. Like I said, um, let's be aware of it. Let's educate our kids about it. Let's talk about it. 
Um, and then let's, as us teachers and adults, be the light for the kids to model that uh, proper behavior so that they can model it to each other. So again, guys, here's my references for this presentation. Thank you for listening. And teachers, um, thank you for taking this issue seriously and working with me and um, working together to do everything we can to prevent um, these situations from occurring. So thank you.